dear everyone, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to our ADB SDG supporting the progress in Asia and Pacific. My name is Xiao Hong Yang, and I'm the chief um, thematic officer of Asian Development Bank. Uh, so with this, I'd like to actually first introduce uh, our first speaker, VP uh, Knowledge Management and Sustainable Development, VP Bamban Susantono. Uh, Dr. Bamban is our VP of, for Knowledge Management and Sustainable Development, and he is really distinguished in providing the global thought leadership on climate change and the sustainable development. He is very active in producing research. He already published a lot of books and also writes very often articles in subject of sustainable development. So he holds a PhD in infrastructure planning and two master degrees in transportation engineering and city and regional planning from the University of California, Berkeley. And he covers a wide range of sector and thematic topics, and also managing flagship publications, ADB like ADO, and also our key indicators for Asian Pacific and uh, our Asian Regional Economic Integration Report. Prior to joining ADB, uh, Dr. Susan Tono was the acting minister and vice minister of transportation of Indonesia and deputy minister of for infrastructure and regional development at the Office of Coordinating Ministry of Economic Affairs. Uh, VP, the floor is yours. Thank you for a generous introduction, Chief Xiaong Yang. A very good day, everyone, and a very good afternoon from ADB headquarters at Manila, the Philippines. I'm really honored to be joined today by my distinguished colleagues, ESCAP Executive Secretary, Ibu Armida Alisabana, and the Deputy Regional Director for Asia and the Pacific and Director of UNDP Bangkok, Mr. Christoph Bahai. Our long-standing partnership in working toward meeting the SDG in Asia and the Pacific has been critical in moving forward. This event today consists of two parts on two critical frontiers for actions where innovation dri drives vital new approaches that can unlock progress on the SDGs. The first deals with localizing the SDG agenda, particularly in our region cities. The second is on financing for the SDGs, and in particular, new approaches to attract private investment for the 2030 Agenda on Sustainable Development. The pandemic toll has been immense, setting back progress in a region that was already off track to meet the SDGs. Yet, while the last 20 two months of COVID-19 has, disrupt, has disrupted all of our lives. It has also shown the capacity of our region to innovate and to reinvent. We have found new ways to work, to do business, and to communicate. Governments have worked hard to contain the spread of COVID-19 while continuing to deliver essential services. Unprecedented government, private sector, and multilateral collaborations largely succeeded in accessing and distributing the vaccines. Increasingly, it has become clear that vaccination holds the key for economies and societies to get out of this human and economic crisis and back on the road to recovery. While the pandemic is far from over, it has shown our capacity to take on difficult problems by using science, technology, finance, and partnerships. The pandemic reinforced the importance of taking an integrated approach to the SDG agenda. There are costs of failing to address seemingly unconnected issues as a whole. And while the future may look uncertain, the pandemic also hit the fast forward button on the critical factors that can accelerate progress on the SDGs. Innovations that engage all levels and actors in society is key. Over the past year, ADB has renewed and deepened its focus on the SDGs as we help our developing members map out recovery measures. Let me start first with localization as a transformative approach for accelerating implementations of the SDGs. Cities will likely be the hubs of innovations that will offer new solutions to persistent challenges. In fact, it was the subnational governments, in particular cities, 
that were at the front lines in containing the pandemic, distributing the relief, and currently getting vaccines into people's arms equitably. Localization is critical for creating an integrated framework for SDG policymaking and delivery by subnational governments. The pandemic showed how important public institutions are in their capacity to provide services for all, and in particular, the most vulnerable in our society. Governments relied on existing subnational institutions and service delivery mechanisms for health services to, to enforce containment measures and to provide social and economic relief. At the same time, reliance on the existing networks of these institutions and mechanisms has exposed their weaknesses and fragilities. The pandemic has raised the questions of whether the existing distribution of responsibilities and resources between the different levels of government allow us to deal with high impact shocks, such as a global health crisis. The answer to this question may differ from country to country in Asia and the Pacific. But on the whole, our experience of the past months has shown that there needs to be more effective coordination between various tiers of government. This has actually been a topic at the meetings, including those of the development working group of the G20. ADB has strongly supported efforts to localize the SDGs. In ADB strategy 2030, our operational plan for priority six, strengthening governance and institutional capacity, emphasizes decentralization and local governance reform to improve service delivery. It also highlights the need to advance local SDG priorities. So let me now turn to the second agenda of this two-day event, how to measure SDG impact. We all know that meeting the SDG requires immense financing, and the pandemic has made this even more difficult. At ADB, we have long recognized that financing for the SDGs requires steering all possible forms of capital toward attaining these goals. Critically, this requires progress toward goal attainment and the impact of financing toward that end to be accurately assessed and monitored. The growing focus on impact measurement and standards that reflect the SDGs among public and private investors give us optimism. However, much more remains to be done to ensure these standards are coherent, ambitious, and feasible. We will discuss this at tomorrow's SDG dialogue. For our part, ADB has been putting the SDGs at the heart of our approach to result management. The integrated, integrated thematic approach of uh, strategy 2037 operational priorities reflect the 2030 agenda and address all 17 SDGs. Our corporate result framework also fully reflects the SDG and associated targets and indicators. Embedding SDGs in ADB's results management and project information system has been recognized as pioneering among development finance institutions as acknowledged in a recent report on the SDG from our independent evaluation department. Localizing the SDG and creating impact standards are two frontiers for accelerating progress toward meeting the SDGs. As mentioned, localization means shifting the focus from traditional centrally led SDG implementations to subnational entities, such as cities and regions. The push to develop standards to measure and align investment with the SDGs on the other hand, give us a sharper focus to the long-standing effort to integrate the ESG, environmental, social, and governance into mainstream investment. The greater focus on impact investment also widens subnational and urban investment opportunities. This allows forward-looking cities and regions to find new ways to attract a range of investors to help meet their financing needs for green, resilient, inclusive, and sustainable development. Ultimately, it helped better align public and private approaches for the SDGs at all levels of government and, core, and across all parts of the economy. Thank you for your participation in this event, and I look forward to a productive and thought-provoking set of discussion. Enjoy the discussion. Thank you. Back to you, Xiao. Thank you so much, VP. And uh, you rightly summarized 
breaking down SDG goals and implementing SDG to subnational and local levels and the city levels is the only way to succeed in achieving SDG goals. With this, I'm very happy to introduce our second speaker, Ms. Amida. She took office on 1st uh, November 2018, and she is the professor of economics at the university, and she was also a minister of national development planning and the head of the National Development Planning Agency of Indonesia from 2009 to 2014. In 2016, she was the member of the high-level independent team of advisors to support the Economic and Social Council dialogue on the longer-term position of the United Nations for the 2030 Agenda. She also had her PhD degree in economics from the University of Washington, USA. Ms. Amida, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ms. Xia Hong Yang, for the kind introduction. Thank you. Uh, Pak Babang Susantono, uh, ADB Vice President, Honorable Mayors, Pak Christoph Bahwe, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed great pleasure to join all of you in this high level virtual event organized by ADB on achieving the sustainable development goals in. Asia and Pacific. I'm very happy to recognize the objective of this event, which is refocusing on the efforts to implement SDG at all government levels under the whole of government and whole of society principle of the 2030 agenda. The focus on innovation that can accelerate achieving the SDGs in Asia and Pacific is also key if the region wants to engage in a transformative pathway in implementing the 2030 agenda. It is alarming, however, that the region is not on track to meet any of the 70 goals by 2030, as stated in the latest uh, ESCAP SDG progress report. At the regional level, our report shows that most progress was recorded for good health and well being as well as industry, innovation, and infrastructure. With some progress for no poverty, zero hunger, quality education, and reduced inequalities. But unfortunately, the region is still lagging behind, and even in some cases, going in the reverse direction, especially on climate action, SDG 13, and life below water, SDG 14. So the question is, how do we move forward from this situation? And importantly, how can we turn around the trends where we are observing stalled progress, stagnant progress, or even this regression? I understand that one focus of this high level event is the ongoing efforts to support local actions on SDGs and to highlight opportunities for multilateral institutions to foster these emerging initiatives. This is exactly the direction that needs to be taken. May I quote or refer to our uh, UN Secretary General that has said, Recovery, recoveries require, and I quote, a focus on how urbanization shapes impact, responses and longer term recovery, end quote. And furthermore, Secretary General highlighted that this must be done through commitments and action in three key areas, namely tackling inequalities and development deficits, strengthening the capacities of local actors, particularly local governments, and pursuing a resilient, inclusive, gender, equal, and green economic recovery. Emerging from the pandemic, we must ensure that cities are empowered to implement urban solutions that contribute both to economic recoveries and address global as well as regional challenges. We are pleased to be working with cities as partners to build capacities and support the development of innovative urban solutions. We are partners in the Asia Pacific Mayors Academy and have worked together on supporting cities to develop the VLR or the voluntary local reviews. 
Another spotlight of today's event is on developing consistent, credible, and comparable accepted SDG impact measurement and management standards that can play a vital role in mobilizing and catalyzing the financing needed to realize SDGs. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused such much damage in terms of lives, livelihoods, loss. It has also exacerbated the challenge to finance SDG even more as the resources have been channeled or uh, redirected to support recovery efforts. The pandemic has also highlighted the urgent need to close data gaps and to have access to more reliable and consistent data across the SDG indicators. Without adequate financing, the likelihood of achieving SDGs is even more remote. Continued policy support and the use of innovative financing instruments, including, for example, thematic bonds, debt or climate soft, blended finance, will therefore be very critical to accelerate implementation of action to reach the SDG goals in our region. Uh, I would like now to draw your attention to our joint effort, uh, ESCAP ADBU NDP, which is the Asia Pacific SDG Partnership Report. This is annual report and it will be launched uh, at the Asia Pacific Forum for Sustainable Development. So this report uh, underpins this quest for knowledge, data, and regional policy development in support of progress towards the SDGs. We will, uh, in the next report especially, we will uh, examine further how COVID-19 has exacerbated pre-existing inequalities in our region with a thematic focus on inclusion, empowerment, and investing in nature. We will also analyze underlying socioeconomic factors that are shaping countries' recovery trajectories and highlight good practices that will ensure a resilient, sustainable, and inclusive recovery from the pandemic. We aim, furthermore, we aim to identify policy pathways for building back better that can address socioeconomic inequalities within and between countries, improve management of critical global commons and global public goods, as well as the regional ones, and promote green and environmentally sustainable development that will deliver the SDGs. The post-pandemic recovery, not only, therefore, the post-pandemic recovery definitely not only post challenges, but offers opportunities for countries to recover better together. We learned that the pandemic has brought to the fore the importance of public health care and management. We also learned that countries can no longer put off protecting development gains from adverse shocks and are better off making development inclusive. The di direction is very clear. The region needs a transformation towards an inclusive, resilient, and sustainable recovery and economy. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, Executive Secretary Amida from UNESCO. Our management, uh, especially our VP uh, Bamban, is very, very keen to make this uh, SDG uh, annual flagship event of ADB uh, SDGs and strengthening our tripartite partnership between among the ADB, UNESCOP, and UNDP on this uh, agenda. With this, I'd like to introduce our third speaker, Mr. Christopher, and uh, he is our Deputy Regional Director for Asian and Pacific and Director at UNDP Bangkok Regional Hub. He has been appointed to this position since last year. And from January 2019, he has been a UNDP resident representative Indonesia and country director in the same country for the period of 2015 to 2018. And his early assignment with UNDP covers a wide range of countries, including China, Vietnam, Ghana, Uzbekistan, and Ukraine. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Xiao Hong. Thank you for this introduction. Um, Bapak Bambang Susantono, the vice president of the Asian Development Bank. Ibu Armida Ali Sharbana, the Executive Secretary of uh, UNSCAP, uh, distinguished panelists, uh, distinguished uh, participants. On behalf of UNDP, let me, let me first extend uh, a warm greetings to all of you. And uh, let me also uh, express my thanks to uh, 
ADB for organizing this uh, important SDG focused uh, event and for inviting uh, UNDP to be part of this uh, opening ceremony. Um, at the personal level, I'm absolutely delighted to be reunited with Bapak Bambang and uh, Ibu Armida, but I, I see also this uh, uh, gathering uh, for this opening as part of the very strong institutional partnership that we are building between UNDP, UNSCAP and, uh, and ADB. Uh, and I also see it in the context of the very recent uh, meeting between the head of UNDP, Achim Steiner, and the president of ADB, which reaffirmed a very strong convergence of view between our two institutions, but also a very you know, strong commitment to work increasingly together uh, for the SDGs in Asia Pacific, and also specifically in the context of the current pandemic to work together for um, a green and inclusive and a resilient recovery uh, in the countries of the region. And I have to say, as uh, the development program of the United Nations, as, as UNDP, uh, we have a very strong belief that um, uh, development uh, must be locally grounded. Uh, and therefore, we're extremely uh, pleased that this conference, uh, this event, which is a culmination of a series of, of conference, will touch specifically on, on two key topics. The first one is the localization of SDGs. And clearly, I think all our programmatic experience in, as UNDP across the region, most of the countries of the region show that localization of SDGs is absolutely essential to turn global commitment into local actions and local development results. Um, and the second topic is really the need for an integrated response and the need to um, mobilize more financing sources for integrated financing at the local level. And having a, a larger range of financing flows, including investors. And if you look at the, at the landscape, uh, there is in Asia Pacific a huge potential for innovative finance that needs to be harnessed a potential that can actually unblock flows that will go for the SDGs, uh, also for climate actions, energy transition, low carbon economies. Um, and there is also a whole variety of innovative finance mechanism, blended finance, which you already mentioned, green finance, including green uh, local bonds uh, on green sukuk, also at the local level, that could be, that could be um, developed further. Uh, so that will be a very important dimension. Let me also say that if we analyze you know, the expense that we have gained as UNDP working in our partners in, in the region, we came really to the uh, evidence that um, the challenges of, uh, of development at the local level are increasingly interconnected. And we also see the increasing value of, uh, of a systemic approach, of a portfolio approach that includes innovation, innovation in all dimensions, including but not limited to, to technology. And we are seeing also a wealth of experience emerging from more cooperation from a number of pilot uh, innovation tests that we are making. And one of the flagship that I could mention today is, uh, is actually in Indonesia, where UNDP is working with the Ministry of Villages and Transmigration to establish uh, an innovation platform that brings together government, communities, and investors to co-design new development approach and development solution like Blue economy in the province of Gorontalo, in the eastern part of Indonesia, or eco tourism in the uh, um, uh, very densely populated province of, of West Java. And this will be continuing. And with ADB, we intend to explore cooperation opportunities to together uh, attract investment, but also do the risking, which is an important part of innovative financing for development. So we have a huge program, but a huge momentum being gained in the region in terms of SDGs, um, uh, financing for SDG, including impact measurement, which can be challenging in terms of methodology, but is an important part of innovative financing for, for development. And in all this, we also see that local government and Bapak Bambang uh, talked about it. Local governments have a key role to play. Of course, we central or federal government, but they are really a key actor um, in terms of providing financing services, finance, providing public services, engaging citizens and promoting localized solutions for SDGs or for climate actions or for recovery uh, from COVID-19 specifically. And in that context, UNDP is you know, very keen to continue working very closely with uh, all local partners and all 
uh, our partners to bring expertise, to reflect together, to promote innov innovation and help really co-design portfolio for local development solutions that are SDG focused uh, and will actually help us um, go back on track on SDGs because I think that's really the ambition that we need to have. And at the same time, we will also continue to uh, advocate for the SDGs and document results and evidence coming from the countries. And I think a very good example of our doing this is a pan SDG partnership report that Ibu Armida mentioned. Again, uh, a very good, uh, important part of the um, cooperation uh, that we have uh, between UNDP, ADB, and UNSCAP, which I mentioned in the beginning and which you know will, will continue with the upcoming launch of the next report. With this, I wish you a fruitful uh, discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. Back to you, Xiao Hong. So in 2021, ADB really amplifies uh, our SDG focused policy dialogue with the government, stakeholders, and different partners in the region. So ADB launched SDG dialogue series with focused attention on opportunities for ADB to step up support for the SDGs through its financing and operations. So today we partnered with UNDP and also we have OECD uh, and the Development Partners Network for Decentralization and Local Governance, we call the DLOC, to convince a series of roundtable discussion on SDG localization. So we strongly believe through this UNDP, uh, UNESCAP, ADB, Asian Pacific SDG partnership, ADB will continue to support the knowledge data regional policy development in support of progress towards the SDGs. So this two part virtual event is convened by two departments in ADB. One is uh, ADB's strategy policy and partnerships department. Another is SDCC, the sustainable development and climate change department. So we will actually focus attention on innovations and implementation then can accelerate SDG implementation in Asia and the Pacific. So with this, I'm handing over to our next um, moderator, who is Rachina. She is going to moderate the SDG localization recovery uh, for the 2013 agenda. Over to you. The floor is yours, Rachina. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Xiaohong. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. I will now take on the mantle of moderating the next session on SDGs localization. Uh, we will begin the session by hearing from one of our executive directors, Sergio Lugaresi, uh, who will share with us some key messages from the recent G20 summit under Italian presidency, which focused on integrating local perspectives into the G20 works on infrastructure investment. Uh, executive director uh, Lugaresi represents Belgium, France, Italy, Portugal, Spain, and Switzerland. Prior to joining ADB's board of directors, Mr. Lugarisi was consultant at the Italian Banking Association in Germany and vice chairman of the banking stakeholder group at European Banking Authority. Mr. Lugarisi was head of the Rome office at the World Bank and served as senior vice president and head of regulatory affairs at the Unicredit Group in Milan, Italy from 2007 to 2013. He was the chief economist at Capitalia Banca di Roma from 1997 to 2007, and he served as a member of the panel of fiscal experts at the International Monetary Fund in the United States till 2015. Mr. Lugarisi has PhD in economics from Università di Bologna. Over to you, Idi Lugarisi. Thank you, uh, Rashena. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. Um, greetings to everybody and um, wherever you are. Um, my, um, my intention is to, uh, first of all, give you a brief, uh, um, to propose to, to you a brief view of, um, my view, of the role of local government uh, in promoting the SDG agenda. Then I will come to the initiative that have been uh, um, carried out under the Italian G20 presidency. Um, and finally, I will um, take one um, example of a recent project in ADB uh, that address some of the issues I would like to raise. So let me, let me first of all start um, saying that, you know, uh, at the beginning when uh, 
the SDGs were uh, were published, uh, the approach for to local government was mainly um, stressing the the role that the, the possible uh, role of in promoting public awareness and participation. Um, and later it became clear that they also play a very important role in public investment as a large share of public investment is managed by local government. But this is, this is not enough in my, in my opinion to understand the specific role of local governments, particularly with respect to the SDGs. And to clarify this issue, let me uh, make a comparison with uh, um, a conceptual comparison. Many years ago, uh, we learned from great economists like uh, Amartya Sen and Anthony Atkinson, the difference between absolute and relative poverty. Um, and we, we, we learned how important is this, this distinction, not only to describe and define but also in designing policies and why, uh, why it is relevant, this distinction. It is relevant because, because refers is related to different individual attitudes uh, toward poverty in this case that shape different social welfare functions. So if we, if we Think uh, now of altruism toward the disadvantage, so broader, issue, broader uh, concept. We can see that there are two, uh, uh, two different uh, possible approaches. One is, uh, uh, is altruism, uh, that uh, the care um, with regard to the uh, relative disadvantage. And the other, on the other side, on the, the polarity, there is altruism toward the absolute disadvantage. Uh, and uh, um, why this is important? Because in my opinion, local governments are the, the, the local government is the institution that is more, um, more appropriate to deal, uh, to, to, uh, to implement, to uh, realize the relative altruism of uh, the citizens, and this is why it's uh, um, local government a uh, better position to uh, to ensure actual inclusive education, to uh, build resilient local infrastructure, make human settlements inclusive, more inclusive, adapt to climate change, and protect lo local natural resources. Uh, so having said that, let's now come to what the G20 has done, and then we will go back to this to this approach I, I propose. Um, in uh, um, so the, first of all, uh, during the Italian G20 presidency, the uh, in July, uh, the finance the G20 finance minister and central banks governors endorsed the policy agenda on infrastructure maintenance. Uh, and this, this document recognizes how um, adequate asset management uh, is critical and in this the important role of local administrations. Then also the Italian presidency has hosted the first edition of the 2021 Infrastructure Investors Dialogue on financing sustainable infrastructures for the recovery. And this, uh, in this uh, um, dialogue, the discussion stressed how well-designed investment in infrastructures are crucial and can be very important in unlocking growth and in boosting the recovery after the pandemic. Then finally, on uh, September, the Italian city of Genova hosted the conference, the high level conference on local infrastructure investment. And at the conference, Bruno Carrasco will conclude 
uh, this session was present, as well as the major of Yokohama. Uh, so uh, this uh, uh, high-level conference built on two previous workshops on financing infrastructure investment for local communities and on Think Green and Act Local, where ADB staff was actively present. Many issues were covered in these conferences, um, but I would like to uh, pick up um, pick up only uh, uh, um, only few of them, uh, and I will make reference to a very um, uh, a very clear statement um, done in this high level conference by a colleague of mine, a friend of mine from the Bank of Italy, who asked uh, three questions to which he gave a very uh, bold negative answer. The first one is, are public investment sufficient? We know, we know the answer. This is not, not, not a surprise, no. We know that there is a large infrastructure finance, financing gap. And here, uh, local governments can and should play an important role. But then maybe more interesting, the answer to the other two questions. We provided data and analysis, of course, to, to provide the census. Are public resources invested efficiently? And the answer was a resounding no. So, it was the, the answer to do pu public resources invested address the needs of the population? And again, the answer was no. So investment management and need assessment are very important. And we need to focus really is the issue how to deliver the re relative altruism of local citizen and contribute to fill the infrastructure financing gap? What are the obstacles that we should remove and we should focus on? And I will stress four, drawing from the global tra uh, task force of local and regional governments. The first one is that we need to have a, um, uh, an institutional setting that provide and ensure participatory governance, what I would call democracy, which means respect for human rights and voice to the disadvantage. And also the involvement of civil society organization. Second, we need a, an effective decentralization, devolution based on legal powers, financial autonomy, clearly defined roles and responsibilities of the local government. Third, we need power and capacity and capabilities to mobilize local resources, both public and private. And fourth, we need measures to monitor and address the performance of local and regional governments. We know SDGs are based uh, uh, on many indicators. Many of these indicators can be localized. And finally, um, just to mention a good example, we have approved a few days ago uh, as a board, uh, a budget support for the Indian government, which aims to improve access to basic urban, urban services. And this pro project is based on uh, um, very clear uh, understanding of uh, this uh, observe. So it's stress the need uh, uh, to be um, for local governments to be empowered uh, in order to plan uh, and deliver urban services um, and to have uh, uh, financial capabilities with um, and, and not to depend uh, too much on fiscal transfer. Second, the need for private sector investments and to remove the obstacle, like for example, the uh, user charges not, uh, uh, not paid uh, um, and, and to have uh, um, cap cap capabilities in local resource mobilization. Third, 
it a knowledge that no the government needs to promote data driven and participatory governance and finally acknowledge the importance of a validation of local government performance in urban service delivery in real time and with this i uh, i'm over finished and please the floor to Thank you very much, Idi Lugarusi, um, for the enlightening remarks, emphasizing the importance of local government's role, not only uh, in public service delivery, but also for public investments. Uh, yes, the local government is indeed in a better position to ensure inclusiveness, as you emphasized, and to preserve natural resources. Um, so yes, we took note of uh, very, very important points you highlighted, participatory governance, decentralization, uh, the rules and response clarity and rules and responsibilities uh, in improved uh, institutional capacity, uh, the local resource mobilization, increased res uh, local resource mobilization, knowledge solutions. So these are very important points and very, uh, in fact, very, very um, uh, strategic interventions that we could support the local government. So with this, uh, we will now, um, uh, now let me now take you to Yokohama City, uh, Japan. Uh, Mayor Takeharu Yamanaka, uh, in his pre-recorded video, will share with us Yokohama's initiatives in localizing SDGs and building smart cities aiming for carbon neutrality and in fostering partnerships with private sector. Uh, allow me to quickly introduce Mayor Yamanaka. Uh, Mr. Yamanaka formerly worked as a professor at School of Medicine, uh, Yokohama City University, as a data scientist. Uh, he held several important positions, such as researcher at the National Institutes of Health and Environmental Health Sciences, uh, Department Manager at the National Cancer Center Japan, specially appointed Vice Dean of the Yokohama City University, a Dean of Graduate School of uh, Data Science, Yokohama City University. Uh, Mayor Yamanaka completed the Graduate School of Science and Engineering from Wasada University. Now let's, uh, let's listen to Mayor Yamanaka. I'm Takaharu Yamanaka, the Mayor of Yokohama, Japan. I would like to express my gratitude to Vice President Santono and everyone involved for this opportunity to participate in the Asian Development Bank high-level event as an SDG's future city designated by the National Government of Japan. Yokohama is engaged in the initiative to address environmental, economic, and social issues through collaboration with residents, businesses and academic institutions. This includes initiatives toward achieving decarbonization. In Japan, many local governments made declarations ahead of the national government to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. These local government initiatives pushed the national government to declare carbon neutrality in October last year. Yokohama was one of the first cities in Japan to declare decarbonization by 2050 with its Zero Carbon Yokohama Declaration. As a leader for Zero Carbon Cities in Japan, Yokohama gathered statements from around 200 local governments and submitted them to the national government. Currently, around 50% of the world population lives in urban areas, which makes up uh, 80% of the world's GDP. It is estimated that 75% uh, of the greenhouse gas emissions come from urban areas, making it even more crucial that cities play a major role in uh, decarbonization and fulfilling their SDGs. The city of Yokohama has created its first voluntary local review to assess the status of its SDGs initiatives and fulfill its responsibility as Japan's largest single municipality. This Yokohama VLO was announced to the world at the 10th Asia Smart City Conference, uh, which was held last month in cooperation with ADB Institute and the World Bank Tokyo Development Learning Center. In August of this year, the IPCC confirmed that it is unequivocal that human influence has warmed the atmosphere, ocean, 
and land. Temperatures around the globe are rising at an increasing pace. The risk of natural disasters, such as uh, landslides caused by the heavy rain or typhoon occurring in cities, is increasing. As an urgent global issue, it is essential to address the decarbonization on global scale, transcending national and regional boundaries. The city of Yokohama is engaged in international cooperation through public-private partnership facilitated by the White Pod program to address urban issues faced by the cities in Asia. Through this program, the city of Yokohama has supported projects in a variety of fields in order to contribute to the SDGs, such as the plastic recycling project in Cebu and the introduction of high-efficiency pumps at the water works facilities in Danen. As a leader of a city that is home to over 3.77 million people, I will endeavor to foster our strong partnership with international institutions and overseas cities and contribute to sustainable growth in Japan and the world. Let us all work together to achieve our goals by 2030. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Yamanaka. We all thank you. Uh, the Yokohama Partnership of Resources and Technologies, um, the, the Y port that he highlighted, is indeed an innovative initiative we could all learn from. And it is an embodiment of strategic public private partnership. Uh, actually, you know, through, um, uh, though y Mayor Yamanaka could not participate live today at this event, we have with us Mr. Uh, Toru Hasimoto, uh, Director General, International Affairs Bureau of the City of Yokohama. Uh, Mr. Hasimoto is in charge of uh, this program, Y port. Uh, and uh, which Mayor Yamanaka also highlighted. Uh, Mr. Hasimoto was instrumental in forging collaborations on the city partnership program with the World Bank and in concluding memorandum of understanding between ADB and the city of Yokohama on urban management and solutions. Before joining the city of Yokohama, he held several technical and managerial positions in the World Bank and ADB Institute. He graduated from the University of Tokyo, Asia Institute of Technology and Massachusetts Institute of Technology on urban planning, engineering and human settlement. Mr. Hasimoto will participate in the interactions and question and answer session. Uh, so this, this is just to let you know that we do have our representative uh, from uh, Yokohama City uh, with us uh, for our interaction later on. Uh, I'd like to just uh, mention that, um, you know, that please uh, to the participants to uh, post your questions and uh, questions to the Q&A box. Uh, kindly mention to whom your question is. Uh, I would now like to invite uh, Park uh, 3 Indrawan, uh, Deputy Head of Regional Planning and Development Agency of uh, Jakarta Province, uh, Indonesia. Um, he's the Deputy Head of uh, BAPEDA, which is uh, the Regional Planning and Development Agency of Jakarta Province uh, since 2020. Uh, previously, he's in, he has been uh, he has undertaken uh, he has held several uh, positions uh, within Jakarta government. Most recently, uh, with the uh, Division Head of Prevent Prevention and Preparedness of the Regional Disaster Management Agency since 2015. He has bachelor's degree in law from University of uh, Brawija and a Master of Urban Asset Management from University of Indonesia. Over to you, Park Indrawan. Okay, thank you. Baik, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat sore. Good afternoon, af everyone. Uh, Bapak Bambang, Ibu Bernadette, Ibu Alicia Bana, Mr. Christopher, and everybody. Uh, I am Trin Rawan, uh, Vice Jakarta Regional Board Planner. It's an honor to participate today meeting, and we would like to share about Jakarta challenge, initiative, and achievement. Next, Jakarta at a glance. Jakarta province, we have uh, five administrative cities, one administrative regions, 44 district, 267 sub district, and more than 2,000 RW and 30,000 RT. RT and RW is a informal community in Jakarta. And today we have more than 10 million citizens. Jakarta, we are the largest and one of the most populated city in Southeast Asia. Our city is commuter city where people travel 
all across for many different kind of activity. The center of our economy in Indonesia and every day, more than 4 million people come to Jakarta. You can imagine, we call that Jakarta is a giant city of Jakarta. Next. This is the impact of COVID-19 on Jakarta Sustainable Development Goals. On June and July 2021, the second and high wave of COVID-19 struck since August, the number of cases is decreased. And you know, seven goals are affected by COVID-19. Next, this is our challenge of Jakarta. On March 2020, COVID-19 struck Jakarta. We are the epicenter of COVID-19 in Indonesia. Some impacted indicator is our poverty, our health services overload, our curriculum flexibility for education due in Jakarta. We facing a new normal habit. We have many, many medical ways. Our economic growth slowly and our unemployment rate is growing big. Next, this is the impact on economic and poverty. The graphic number one is Jakarta economic growth year and year for the second quarter of 2021. Take a look in here, going up and down. And the other one is our unemployment rate and growth for formal sector labor. Our growth is still increased, but COVID-19 give our impact so bad in poverty. And the last one is poverty rate. Our poverty rate almost, almost decreased, but after COVID-19, he grow, grow up again. Next. This is the impact of COVID-19 on the sustainable development goals. For good health and well-being, the second wave of pandemic, our access and availability of medicine in hospital, medical equipment were limited. The other one, we need to increase about mental health becomes an important aspect for our citizen. In quality education, the new normal and education distance learning. You know, our students have a limited access to gadget and internet. Jakarta try to solve this problem with free internet for our students. Give the gadget for the our student and the other one we need to adapt to curriculum flexibility you know this is a new normal for us this is a new normal for our student so we need a flexibility curriculum in educated for sustainable cities and communities we facing a new normal habit everyone everybody in our activity in working, everybody try to new normal habits. And the other one for peace, justice, and strong institution, we need to increase our access to help and essential services like health, like education, like poverty, or anything for our citizen in Jakarta. For the was, we're facing a big problem about medical medical waste. Next, this is our strategy in handling COVID-19 pandemic. In COVID-19 pandemic today, our active cases for today is 442 people. For a PCR test, Today we have done for 12 more than more than 12 and 500 people and our vaccine until today. Our achieve is 
11 million for first doses and 9 million for a second doses. But most of them, not our citizen. Our surrounding city like Bekasi, Depok, Bogor citizen get vaccine in Jakarta. For our citizen in Jakarta today, more than 80% have vaccinated and more than 19% not vaccinated at all. So this is our achieve for a strategy in handling COVID-19 pandemic. What kind of strategy? Our strategy is collaboration. Do not collaboration in vaccine. Our strategy in handling COVID-19 is collaboration. Just like government in 4.0, collaboration it will become a bigger than letter. You know, in testing, we collaborate with our stakeholder, our citizen, our NGO, and our government for vaccination, for tracing, for testing, until treatment. You can imagine about this. Uh, we have uh, many, many pictures about our activity in collaboration to handling COVID-19. Next, this is our recovery strategy. We have one, two, three, four, more than five strategy, but we will be focused about vaccination and the other one about information management. In vaccination, we try to collaboration between our citizen, between stakeholders, between NGO between the other local government surrounding Jakarta to make a big massive, to make a campaign. Everybody want to know, you need to vaccine immediately. And we arrange, we manage how to vaccine of all that citizen. After the vaccination, we need to increase about information management. Jakarta, as a province, have a platform we call that Jaki. With a Jaki platform, we want to know about a real time. We want to know about accurate. We want to know about transparency. So our recovery strategy, we priority in vaccination and information management, but about social assistance, social protection program, large scale social collaboration, social movement, monitoring, law enforcement, we do it. Next. This is our, our accelerating SDGs in Jakarta. What kind of our good practices in large scale social collaboration, we assist for small, medium enterprises. We call that informal sector. You know, the informal sector have a big impact when COVID-19 struck in Jakarta. So our government assistant for them. The other one, we try to develop our resilient village. And the other one, in collaboration, we try to community participation in self-quarantine. Jakarta, alhamdulillah. Jakarta try to develop our citizen. To do what? To do better for their neighborhood. We try to communication with day citizen to get participation in self quarantine in Jakarta. You know, neighborhood, people, citizen, it's order to support participation in self quarantine. We call that karantina mandiri. The other one is stakeholder participation for 
vulnerable citizen. Many, many vulnerable citizens in our city. So our stakeholder try, try, try what? Try to do something to make them bigger, to make them can throw this epidemic COVID-19 in Jakarta. So when we told about Jakarta province Jaki application, I would like to explain about Jaki. Jaki is designed to be a super application by Jakarta province. Jaka, Jaki is an information system platform. So citizen can register for vaccination anytime, anywhere through our platform Jaki. The other one, we can allow the public to deliver complaint on public services or policy implementation to contribute, strengthen social protection policy. We priority about system information and vaccination. So, Mrs. Rasni, thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. Thank you so much. So it's been very really interesting hearing, you know, because thanks for sharing with us the challenges Jakarta faced with COVID-19 and some of the initiatives you took to address those challenges. Uh, we take note of the importance of adapting to new normal, the crucial need for collaboration, as you emphasized, we heard loud and clear at all levels and sectors and having recovery strategy in place. Uh, and also strengthening information management system. We can't agree with you more. Uh, thank you, Pakin Rawan, for this very insightful presentation. Uh, now from Southeast Asia, let us go um, to Central West Asia. Uh, we have with us uh, Racha uh, Sargisyan, acting mayor of Erevan. Uh, um, as a quick introduction of Mr. Sargisyan, uh, is appointed first deputy mayor of Erevan on 29 October, 2018. Uh, prior to this appointment, Mr. Sargisyan held several leadership positions in the banking sector. He's the founding uh, and uh, founder and member of the political council of the uh, Arake Lutetian Party. Uh, Mr. Sargisyan served in the armed force and was the commander of tank squad and lieutenant. Uh, Sargisyan has a bachelor's degree in software of computer facilities and automated systems from the State Engineering University of Armenia and a master's degree in public financial management from the State Academy of Management. Over to you, Mr. Sargisyan. Thank you. Honorable organizers and guests, we are humbled by the opportunity to join you in this high level event and share our ongoing effort challenges to contribute to the implement the sust sustainable development goals in Armenia. Situated along the Razdan River, Yerevan is one of the world's oldest con continuously inhabited cities with the history that dates date back to the 8th century BC, with the territory of over 200 square kilometers and the population of one and one million people. Yerevan is the administrative, cultural and industrial center of Armenia and the landlocked country in the South Caucasus. The Republic of Armenia being a member of United Nations and recognizing the principles of universal values, human rights protection and democracy as is, is, is inseparable parts of its state of philosophy and a chief member of United Nations community. In order to achieve the sustainable development goals and to ensure high quality of life, and the environment, the government of Armenia initiated the development of over 30 sector strategies, as well as the comprehensive Armenian transformation strategy 22-2050. When Armenia presented its first SDGs voluntary national review in July 2018, it was in the immediate uh, aftermath of the non-violent velvet revolution of April 9. Uh, since 2018, Armenia has launched a number of reforms in, in the areas of human rights protections, rule of law, combating corruption, fight against criminal subculture, improved public administration, and 
strategic planning along with ambitious economic and social reforms. Empowered by the democratic mandate, a renewable sense of political will has been demonstrated re with regard to the rule of law, tackling of corruption and strengthening of democracy institution, as well as improvements in the legal framework, national strategy de development, and planning effectiveness and public institution of empowering of civil society. However, there are several challenges that need to be addressed in order to fill implement the sustainable development goals and targets, especially in the areas of judicial reforms, processes aimed at climate change mitigation, use of natural resources and energy diversification. Indeed, the new and unprecedented social economic challenges posted by COVID-19. Like any other local government and partners more, given that our city hosts more than one third of our city uh, or our country's population, our municipal government has been at the forefront of the fight against COVID-19. And it is playing a key role in responding to the critical needs and providing basic service to, the, to their cities. In doing so, the city feels responsible to allege its actions so to support the central government also in meeting the sustainable development goals. As a first deputy mayor of Yerevan, I am mindful of our city's roles role in promoting inclusive, sustainable development within our municipality and in the implementation of SDGs in Armenia, link the SDG 11 with the urban dimensions of the other 16 goals, which uh, will be an essential part of localization of the SDG. We are very proud that Yerevan was one of Pioneer City, which has developed and approved the Green City Action Plan, which include many SDG commitments. Under the Action Plan, we have already allocated substantial efforts, especially in relation to the SDG 13, such as energy efficiency in kindergartens, shift to LED lighting on Yerevan City, streets and most important Yerevan's transport re reorganization which mean it in it initiated with the support of Asian Development Bank. Meantime being a comparable small city with limited self-financial resources we are facing a strong need in support from central government and our donor partners to realize our contribution to SDG as implementation in Armenia. But particular, we need more resources for awareness raising, establishing a baseline and building robust database, establishing the permanent working unit, unit on SDG to lie in, uh, lies with UN office and three government, Resp Republic Armenian government strategy development with short, mid and long term action toward meeting the sustainable development goals. The strategy should include also uh, precious information of financial and resources need. We are grateful to, uh, to the ADB for helping us strengthen our goal governance, especially in the field of urban mobility and urban transport planning through various projects, and in the particular, the Sustainable Urban Development Investment Program, on which we have built a very successful partnership for the last 10 years. We are aware of ADP's upcoming support for nationalization and monitoring of sustainable development goals, and very much that the uh, very much hope that Yerevan can benefit from this technical assistance. It would be help us to do our part in supporting SDGs acceleration in Armenia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Acting Mayor Sargisyan. I'm very encouraged to hear that uh, you know you have been doing lots of work, taking a lot of initiatives in developing. Uh, uh, developing Erevan into this green city uh, and having this very clear action plan. 
focusing on urban mobility and planning. Um, so this is definitely a way forward um, for a greener and sustainable um, uh, city. So with this, um, uh, I would now like to take you um, to South Asia, actually. We have with us Advocate M. Anil Kumar. He's the mayor of Kochi um, Municipal Corporation and chairperson of the mayor's chamber, uh, Kerala, India. Um, uh, Mr. Anil Kumar was elected mayor of the Kochi Municipal Corporation in 2020. As a lawyer, uh, he debuted as a councillor at the age of 25 in the year 2000 and was elected to the council for the fourth time this year. He held the post of the Work Standing Committee Chairman from 2008 to 2010. Uh, so over to you, Mayor Anil Kumar. So uh, thank you, uh, everybody out there. Good afternoon. I don't know what is the time in Manila and in other places where my brother mayors have uh, joined in because it is different time everywhere. Uh, see, regarding the uh, SDG localization, uh, the, uh, the SDG uh, goals as such, uh, I will first uh, tell about uh, Kochi as such because it is uh, one of the uh, important cities in the southernmost uh, tip of uh, Kerala. And uh, 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 the importance of uh, Kochi is that it, since it is part of Kerala, uh, I'll tell you that uh, Kerala is a, part, is a place which is uh, very different from other uh, states of uh, India. Uh, the reason is that some of the SDG goals have already been uh, in the uh, uh, in the uh, in the agenda of Kerala government way before. That is historically itself, uh, Kerala is a place where many of the SDG goals have already been accomplished or have already been streamlined or put into the agenda. Like the land reforms that happened in uh, in Kerala, which uh, helped the uh, people of Kerala to have at least uh, some uh, bit of land for everybody out there. And then again, uh, I would uh, like to say, uh, tell that even in the education sector, everybody knows that the people from Kerala have been in uh, different parts of India, working in different parts of not only India, in different parts of the world. So education uh, wise, also we will we would like to say that. Uh, SDG goals, when we consider SDG goals, Kerala have been way ahead of other states inside uh, inside uh, India. When in the uh, government of India ranked uh, uh, the different cities in Kerala, in, in India, uh, Kochi has been ranked fifth, and that uh, ranking came just uh, five days before. Uh, we were ranked fifth among the Indian cities. Uh, from the top, we are the fifth city in India to have attained uh, SDG goals. And uh, I, will, I would like to enumerate my points very fast. One is that the new trends in Kerala. The Kerala government itself has uh, uh, come out with many of the important projects. One of the important projects has been uh, the, uh, the canal rejuvenation project. Canal rejuvenation project is trying to uh, see that our canals are cleaned up, are, uh, to see that our, uh, our, our canals are uh, purified, and it is uh, uh, it can be used for uh, water transportation for uh, even for moving cargo. And uh, another uh, important uh, step from our side, the government of Kerala state uh, side has been the proper decentralized uh, waste management system that has been happening in Kerala. We have a Brahmapuram uh, facility which is 20 kilometers away from the heart of the city, but we are developing. We are uh, seeing that the city has uh, the city properly. Uh, uses its uh, uh, this facility uh, uh, to uh, completely uh, 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 treat its weights properly in a scientific manner. Uh, the Ardram is one of the missions because we are in the midst of COVID and Ardram is one of the important missions inside uh, Kerala which sees that our primary health centers. Now I would say I would tell that this primary health centers play a very important role uh, in combating COVID. Because Kerala was the first place which had the uh, first COVID patient inside India. The reason was because of our uh, number of uh, people who are working uh, internationally. So as a result, uh, uh, we have a very good uh, net connection with all the international airports. We have people working uh, in different parts of the world. And as a result, the first COVID case was uh, in fact detected inside Kerala. That was from a, a non-resident traveler who came back from uh, work. And many of the tourists also, uh, maybe the tourists from Britain, in fact, they uh, they carried uh, COVID to this place, but still we could uh, treat the British nationals properly inside the COVID hospitals in uh, Kerala. Now, Ardram is one of the missions of the Kerala government, which helps to uplift the, uh, the, uh, the primary health centers, to strengthen the primary health centers, 
Um, I would say that the city has 12 urban primary health centers and two among this are nationally accredited uh, health centers inside the country. And I will tell you that in a month, there are 25,000 lab tests, laboratory tests that is happening free of course inside the city. The city has also set up four mobile medical units with medical staff specifically in during the COVID uh, pandemic. We are also uh, started a COVID hospital. The city in fact started a COVID ho hospital. We have the auto rickshaws. I don't know, uh, many of the Asian countries might be knowing about auto rickshaws. And this auto rickshaw drivers, and one of the auto rickshaw drivers was a lady. Uh, they carried the PP kits with them. Uh, they carried the, uh, ox uh, the oxygen units with them. They could give some treatment for all the COVID patients. They, in fact, we in fact started a, uh, in, in, uh, we in fact uh, started a place from where we uh, we prepared the uh, uh, the uh, the food for the COVID patients, and we could transport this to the entire uh, city. Now, PMAY, the Prime Minister's uh, uh, Awas Yojana, it is a Prime Minister's central government project. We have combined that with a life mission. Life mission is again the state government project. And we have the uh, city of corporation also joining in. We are trying to see that all the people inside the city, the slum dwellers, they get a house. We started a Rajiv Awas Yojana. This is again a central government uh, project wherein we have started a ground plus 11 multi dwelling, multi store dwelling uh, units. And it's a 14 store uh, facility that we have started. Now, 21 crore has again uh, come from the smart city uh, uh, project. And so this has also helped us uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, helping uh, solve many of our uh, uh, problems in, uh, for housing. Now, in education also, we have uh, started many of the uh, facilities. And the schools have uh, slowly started being up, uh, uplifted. The infrastructure facilities in the meal to everybody who is feeling hungry inside the city. Uh, the normal cost of a, a meal in uh, Kochi is 100 rupees, Indian rupee, but we are giving it at 10 rupees to see that nobody has hunger. No, everybody is, it is a it is a city which is uh, free of hunger. The GIZ, which is a German agency, we, we have started the sustainable urban development, smart city projects inside the city, and the sustainable uh, urban transport project for, uh, uh, which has been mooted by us, uh, which has helped us uh, to see that uh, we go, uh, we we went for many of the uh, uh, green projects inside the city in in, in, uh, uh, in transportation, and we have backed many of the uh, national projects. We have been uh, ranked the first inside the country for having a sustainable urban project, wherein there are uh, east uh, cyclic is there, e auto rickshaws is there, the metro is there. There is an intermodal transit system already in place inside the city, wherein you can come in an auto rickshaw, then go on in a uh, in a cycle. You can select for a uh, 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 for a uh, uh, boat uh, which is running through the city. So these types of initiatives have helped us uh, to do this. The master plan has already been there. Uh, I'll go very uh, quick uh, into my last points and specifically uh, related to COVID. We have started our projects very fast. We are trying to build a dashboard uh, so that we can uh, rank ourselves how the projects are being uh, run on uh, in the city with, when, when we go to SDG localization. We have, in fact, uh, streamlined all the SDG goals. We have streamlined the SDG goals. Not only that, we are, we are trying to convert it to, into the dashboards. We are trying to open the private sector also to see that all the 17 SDG goals, we have made the budget uh, more or less in tune with the SDG goals. So, uh, as a result of that, uh, we are also reviewing each month about what is happening on these SDG goals. We have six standing committees. All the standing committees are given a charge of an SDG goals. We have got the education standing committee. We have got the education standing committee. We have the finance standing committee. We have the uh, uh, the, uh, the welfare standing committee. Many of the standing committee have, have, have been earmarked different SDG goals to see that all the standing committees have their own uh, SDG goals, and we are trying to see that uh, all the eight standing committees inside the Kochi Principal Corporations uh, uh, are uh, uh, frequently uh, we frequently update the standing committee uh, the SDG goals, uh, assess the needs and priorities of each of the sectors, 
then define the SDG priorities and identify the relevant uh, targets and the priority uh, uh, sectors. Consult and interact with the state and district actors and stakeholders. Set targets which is individual and also share shared. Develop strategies and proposals, inputs to the budget and annual development plans, and also monitor the progress and report the performance of focus SDGs. So this is uh, something I have to uh, present in a, a nutshell that what we are doing. Uh, we are to try. Uh, we are trying to learn from the experience of different uh, cities. Thank you a lot, and thank you ADB for having given us an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Kumar, uh, Anil Kumar. I mean, I'm, I'm very thankful to you that despite your, you know, like other priorities, I heard that there has been um, the heavy rainfall and there's some emergency situation in Kerala and Kochi. So despite that, for making time to come to this event and sharing with us some of the initiatives that you have been taking, it's very impressive to note uh, that implementation of SDGs is quite advanced in Kerala state and particularly in your city. Uh, your vision for better utilization of, you know, like these canal, canals and effective waste management is uh, very uh, exemplary, I found. Uh, certainly a learning for everyone. Uh, you emphasize the important role of primary health centers in addressing challenges such as COVID-19. Uh, definitely, it cannot be emphasized enough. Uh, it was interesting uh, for me, it was very interesting to learn about some of the innovative approach you took in responding to COVID-19, such as those auto rigs are carrying food and medicines uh, and providing inclusive, uh, inclusive and better quality public services in education and transport sectors. Uh, the dashboard for project monitoring is uh, certainly another very good initiative. So thank you so much, Mayor Kumar, again. Uh, really grateful to you. Uh, we now return to Philippines, actually. Uh, Philippines is where ADB headquarters is. And now we will listen to ADB Mayor ADB of uh, Kauyan City, uh, Bernard uh, Festino, MD, MD. Mayor Bernard has received the Hall of Fame Award as one of the most outstanding mayors all over the Philippines in recognition of his relentless efforts in the implementation of the Smart Cities Project and the localization of the SDGs. He was named the best city manager by the Europe Business Assembly, most outstanding public servant, ambassador for peace, science ambassador, and a, a recipient of the most prestigious, the outstanding young men of the Philippines award. One of the major accomplishments of Mayor Bernard is on digital governance and making uh, his city, Kau city of the Philippines, and one of the pioneers in localizing the SDGs. Uh, Mayor Bernard was invited to talk at the recently concluded UN General Assembly for the session, Building the City of the Future, Step Up Now Through Collaboration and Innovation, held last September 2021. Uh, so very excited to hear from you, uh, Mayor Bernard. So over to Thank you very much, Shoshana. Um, all protocols of service, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant afternoon from the city of Kauaian. On behalf of the people of Kauaian City, it is my privilege to share with you the journey of Kauaian City towards becoming a smarter, and sustainable city. I would like to start my short discussion briefly by introducing the city of Kauai. Kauai City is located 365 north of Manila. We are the poorest city amongst the cities in the region in terms of income. We're highly agricultural, and that is where we take pride on, on how a small, poor, and highly agricultural city was able to evolve as the Philippines' first smarter city. Kauai City was given the recognition as the Philippines' first smarter city by the Department of Science and Technology on March 25, 2015, through our collaboration, through our strong collaboration with the DOST and the Academe, particularly Isabella State University. And when the United Nations launched the new 17 Sustainable Development Goals, Kauaian City took the lead in localizing these goals, which we call Labing Pitong Hamon Sabawat Kauaianyo, or 17 Challenges for Every Citizen of Kauaian, where all plans and programs of the LGU are aligned for the achievement of these global goals. And the Smarter Cities Project has greatly contributed for the achievement of most of these global goals. With the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic, the city became more aggressive and active in promoting and implementing the UN SDGs and Smart City initiatives and make Hawaiian City resilient, innovative, smarter and sustainable, inclusive, nurturing, goal and goal-driven, rising as we call it in the new normal. The champion, the implementation of the SDGs, we deemed it necessary to first increase awareness among the people about these SDGs to get them involved. And these are just some of our campaigns, which show how, which shows our strong commitment in the implementation of the UN SDGs. Our distribution of school bags to all public school um, students, our first and largest SDG mural inspired sports complex, our SDG park, and at this point, I would like to share with you the different projects that we have accomplished on our smart 
and Sustainable Cities Project.
Okay, thank you very much. I had to cut the I had to cut the it's shorter, but uh, at present the city has embarked on ISO 37122, the, the certification for smart and sustainable communities and voluntary local review. We aim to be the first city in the Philippines to be ISO certified on smart and sustainable cities, purposely to help us better assess the impact of all the initiatives we have implemented in the last five years. It is with high hopes that the accomplishments of Hawaiian City could serve as a blueprint for other cities who also would like to engage in the same project to create more smart and sustainable communities in the Philippines. And finally, push for the legislation of this framework and be an essential indicator for pandemic proof, good local governance moving forward. Again, thank you for giving us this opportunity. And I hope that we were able to inspire you with this humble experience of Kauai City, that smart cities are not only for big or metro cities, if it can be done in a city which is poor in terms of income, small and highly agricultural city like Kauai, then there's no reason for other cities not to be able to do it. Again, thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Mayor Bernat. I really enjoyed the video. Very inspiring. Um, you certainly have a good set of accomplishments to be proud of and very glad to learn that you are undertaking the voluntary local review. I'm sure that we'll be in touch with you again to learn more from, uh, from your uh, you know, success stories, definitely. So now we would like to welcome Dr. Bernadia Desandrevi, Secretary General of the United Cities and Local Governments, Asia Pacific. She doesn't belong to any particular cities but she will uh, share with us the regional perspectives. Now that we have heard the local perspectives from different uh, cities, the stories, um, Dr. Bernadia will give us uh, regional perspectives, uh, brief regional perspectives on localizing SDGs. Uh, she has been working in the areas of urban development for more than 15 years. And uh, she is, she's a visiting professor at several universities in Japan and a resource speaker at various international events. Uh, in 2015, she was appointed a member of the advisory group on gender issues of UN Habitat. She was selected in 2018 by Gov Insider Asia as one of the prominent women whose work made an impact in Asia Pacific. Uh, Dr. Bernadia received a PhD in urban engineering from the University of Tokyo, a master's degree in atmospheric physics from Nagoya University, and a master's degree in public policy from the National University of Singapore. Over to you, Dr. Bernadia. Thank you, Magandang Hapo, uh, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, it's always a big pleasure for me to join uh, this uh, important panel discussions and uh, see also uh, familiar faces here. I see here Asimoto Sang, Patri, and of course, Mayor Ben Hart, and everybody who joined uh, us today. Um, I think I don't need to convince everyone here how localization of SDGs is very, very important and extremely important. I think you heard already uh, from uh, previous speakers that uh, local governments uh, have a very important role to play uh, in achieving the SDGs uh, because when we look at the uh, target itself, um, there are more than 65% of the targets must be done at the local level. This is why um, local governments uh, definitely uh, play important role. And I think you, you heard also from uh, all the mayors today, uh, and of course, uh, representative of uh, cities uh, that um, they are making actions. Uh, the local governments are already uh, making a good actions. Uh, so in action is not uh, option anymore for uh, cities and local governments. So um, we actually, uh, I'm talking from the broader perspective here, uh, we see many, many uh, cities and local governments uh, see these uh, SDGs uh, as more than just a list of goals, uh, but uh, um, many uh, of our, our constituencies uh, use uh, this um, SDGs as a way or opportunity to renew um, the special uh, the social contracts, uh, especially uh, in engaging uh, with uh, uh, civil society uh, and working with uh, different stakeholders here. Uh, so um, I I'm glad that the previous spe speaker also mentioned the importance of multi-governance uh, system in achieving these SDGs. Um, and uh, the way of uh, the regions uh, in, in doing localization uh, are very varied. Uh? There are countries uh, that even have more than 17 goals. Um, like uh, uh, one country also added uh, uh, goal number 18. And uh, in terms of localization of SDGs, uh, uh, there are several countries also that uh, uh, put uh, different level of subnational governments uh, as part of their enabling environments. 
uh, I think Indonesia is the only uh, countries uh, in, in this region that uh, localize SDGs uh, under the village level. Um, this is uh, quite interesting also to see uh, that uh, every country has a different way of doing localization of SDGs. Uh, however, uh, local governments, we see local governments, uh, localizations come uh, here as a process of defining in, and implementing and monitoring uh, strategies at the local level for achieving global, national, and subnational sustainable development goals and targets. We have to pay into uh, account this uh, subnational context uh, for the achievement of the 2030 agenda because every uh, local government uh, is unique yeah? uh, is unique so we they have a sub special uh, uh, context uh, that need to be applied also in the localization of SDGs. Um, so um, uh, I don't need to highlight here why local governments uh, is an essential actors uh, in achieving the SDGs because of course uh, this uh, very much uh, depending on this uh, capacity of local governments in uh, especially in integrating uh, uh, into uh, their planning and, and, and their managements. Uh, and uh, what we need for local governments because we expect 65% uh, uh, to be achieved um, uh, by uh, local actors, uh, especially local governments. Uh, therefore, uh, this uh, important element needed is a good or a conducive environment that is needed uh, at the local level, especially for uh, local governments and cities. Yeah. So we need to have a, a very strong uh, backup uh, on our localizations uh, effort. Uh, that means uh, it requires uh, adequate means of implementations, uh, not only in terms of legal framework. Uh, this is why uh, we really need uh, to highlight the importance of decentralization here. And uh, of course, the importance of uh, necessary reforms uh, to strengthen the, especially on the municipal funds uh, and innovative financing mechanisms. Um, we, um, I think uh, it's, it's clear that we cannot depend very much uh, on the public uh, investment, therefore it's uh, require uh, collaborative efforts, uh, especially uh, on the uh, private investment as well. So um, there are already good examples uh, how this enabling environments uh, have been provided in the country through different uh, uh, degrees uh, uh, given by uh, even presidential, presidential degree or minister's degree. Uh, and also there are uh, already a lot of uh, good examples how uh, access to resources uh, and ability for local governments to generate fundings uh, that also uh, been included in the legal framework. Uh, so, uh, but we know with this COVID uh, situations, uh, more funding uh, definitely is needed. Uh, I think it's clear uh, what the Ibu Armida said that uh, many of uh, goals are off track, uh, even uh, in the regressions, uh, especially goal uh, uh, 11, uh, goal uh, 13 and 14 and then uh, certainly goal 16s. Uh, so um, what I think we need is the um, uh, prioritizations of the localization in all countries in these regions. Uh, this is important with support mechanism on uh, having a, a good enabling environment for them. So uh, we also need to have a, a kind of a knowledge hub in which a lot of uh, case studies that already we heard today uh, can also be uh, put in the platform. We have already localization of ADG's platform uh, that uh, includes uh, several best practices. Um, and then uh, uh, another thing is a uh, capacity building. Uh, this is also uh, definitely required by local governments, uh, especially in aligning these uh, ADGs uh, indicators uh, and targets into their local targets. And uh, what uh, maybe last that I like to highlight here, uh, there are already a big number of uh, interests of local and regional governments to uh, develop what they call it a PLR, Florentine Local Review, to show um, to um, you know as part of their commitments uh, to show the progress on the uh, SDGs uh, uh, implementations. 
uh, this also align with uh, these uh, priorities of those cities. We, um, uh, we work uh, with uh, ADB right now to develop a PLR for Jakarta. I think the, the, the previous speaker from Jakarta, Patri, uh, has included that in the uh, last slide, but because on the time, he was not able to show. Um, so um, uh, the number of cities, especially in Asia Pacific, working on the PLR uh, have been uh, increasing. That's also include uh, the first VLR uh, for, uh, for Indonesia, which is in Surabaya, that was included in the uh, VNR of Polanti National Review. Another component that um, um, we want to also show is the perspective of local governments in the VNR processes, because uh, many, many VNRs uh, submitted by, United, uh, by, uh, uh, by countries, by state governments uh, to United Nations, uh, they have a kind of, uh, still uh, but this is also a progress uh, in terms of uh, numbering uh, we see um, more uh, perspective of local governments have been reflected in the vnrs but compared to uh, the first vnr like 2017 the number was quite low but we see uh, increasing number of the uh, perspective inclusion of perspective of local governments in the vnr uh, uh, processes as well. Like uh, uh, we also develop what we call it voluntary sub-national governments review. Uh, be, because maybe you ask question, what the difference between PLR and PSR? Uh, PLR uh, uh, indicates one uh, or individual uh, local or regional government, but uh, uh, PSR reflects a group of local governments in the same country. So we uh, uh, we completed the PSR for Indonesia that was also mentioned in the VNR uh, submitted by Indonesia. Um, so um, in a nutshell, uh, let me uh, conclude here. Um, local governments uh, indeed a big player uh, and need also to be supported by different stakeholders. Uh, of course, having a good collaboration with uh, communities uh, as well as the private companies. And uh, so we need to uh, provide a support, much greater supports of uh, participation of local and regional governments uh, in reporting and follow-up mechanism. And then the second also make this localization of IDGs uh, as essential part of the national strategies. This should be really highlighted. Um, and, uh, and of course, uh, happy that uh, G20 also mentioned about this because we, uh, through this Urban 20, uh, this is the group of uh, capi uh, uh, capital cities of uh, uh, countries belong to G20, also have a movement, we, we call it Urban 20, that also uh, highlight the importance of local governments in, in this SDGs uh, achievement. So we have been using all the platform, all the fora, for uh, highlighting the, the, the important voice of local government. So back localizations, uh, we have to really support and provide a, 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 sup, uh, a back localization effort with adequate means of uh, implementations, including, uh, of course, access to finance, and also support bottom-up monitoring processes, uh, success, I, I already mentioned, VLRs, Flandri local reviews, and Flandri sub-national government reviews. So I really congratulate like uh, city of Yokohama, uh, Kaoyan city and many other cities that have completed uh, this VLR as, uh, as I mentioned, uh, as a social contracts. Another, uh, the last one is a boost international co uh, cooperation and multi stakeholders partnership for social localization. But uh, I also want uh, maybe in the last uh, thing that I really like to uh, get attention to everyone is that uh, Cities and local governments have huge challenges. Uh, I don't need to mention uh, what the challenges are, you already heard of it, but we are also part of the solutions and, and already show uh, from uh, not only presentations today, from uh, a lot of commitments that uh, local and regional governments are already walk the talk they already show and they already work and they are making actions. So this is why uh, we need to strengthen our involvement uh, in achievement of the SDGs. And uh, definitely a uh, big support is needed, uh, especially on uh, having a twinning or city-to-city uh, -city corporations or local government to local government corporations as part of these um, modes or uh, as part of the means of implementations because we see this cooperation also effortless uh, and it's not just uh, 
within a certain duration. So we really want uh, development agencies uh, to also uh, consider this kind of uh, collaborations among local governments uh, as a one of the uh, key uh, strategies in uh, achieving uh, SDG. So uh, thank you once again and um, for your attention and I'm ready for any questions. Thank you. Back to you, Rachana. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Panadia, for attending this event despite being on well. So very happy that you are here with us. Uh, we took note of the many important things that you have shared with us, including the importance of uh, decentralization, innovative, fi innovative financing mechanisms, as we can't just rely on public resources, collaborative efforts, uh, um, knowledge hub, capacity development, uh, definitely voluntary local reviews for effective SDG localization, which is critical to accelerate SDGs implementation. Now we have actually, we have heard stories from different cities across the world and regional uh, and regional perspectives from Dr. Banadia. Uh, we have only very little time actually for question and answer. Um, so uh, we have, uh, maybe we can just at least spend like five minutes uh, for question and answer. And I promise that uh, the questions that we could not address uh, this uh, forum, will get back to you with the, with the responses. Um, uh, so, but we have, uh, we have both questions in the question and answer box uh, to, Mayor Bernard. Uh, so um, let me uh, put this question to Mayor Bernard. Uh, the first question is, many progress has been made in uh, Kaoyan City regarding SDGs. I really appreciate that. My question is, uh, whether uh, is there any uh, intergenerational plat platform in your city to advance the process of SDGs achievement? And by 2030, especially in our adopting local perspectives and wisdom. Uh, so this is a question from Indonesia, Stevie Leonard. Over to you, Mayor Bernard. No, what we have is really engagement to the citizens, regardless of age, regardless of uh, status and sector. And uh, this is one of the things, uh, it's a holistic approach that we did. So, uh, and it's a continuous challenge. It doesn't mean that the younger ones are more um, acceptable and uh, um, uh, aware of uh, the SDGs. It's a holistic approach that we're trying to do. Thank you. Um, there is another question for you as well. So while you are here, maybe I can, let me just quickly read that question. Uh, it's like, how do you fund all initiatives, all from the government budget or other resources? Maybe this is a very quick question. Uh, a lot of uh, the first, most of the, the projects that we, we implemented during the first few years were all uh, a pilot, uh, were all project uh, funded by uh, either PPPs or uh, uh, solutions providers or NGAs, such as DOST, uh, because we we package Kauai City as a city hub or a city city. Um, we were like a guinea pig, city lab. We were sort of a city lab. So all, all of these new innovations and and uh, uh, programs were were tried and tested as pilot projects here in the city of Kauai. Thank you. Uh, there's another question, a sub question is, uh, how do you manage the behavior of your people so that they can adapt to change and support change? Maybe very briefly, Mayor Bernard. We have, we have to be persistent. Uh, it's an ongoing challenge. And uh, there, are, there are projects that they, they are adaptable. There are things that they don't use. Then we have to move on. Thank you so much. This is very, very helpful. I have one question uh, to DG Hasimoto from Yokohama. Mayor Yoko, uh, uh, Yamanaka presented very interesting this uh, Y port and also VLR. Um, so how, uh, what do you think that how will this kind of local action like VLR is going to facilitate the international collaboration? Uh, uh, thank you, Rachana. I believe the VLR is the process, not the product. So I think it is important for us to carry forward this exercise. And uh, so I think uh, we can make a movement worldwide by doing uh, many, many VLR in a common language. I think we had a common language and uh, sharing the knowledge and uh, uh, collaborate. It is a really important and critical to have the common uh, benchmark or language. So I think VLR is providing that. And uh, in regards of the whiteboard, I, I think we believe VLR can be instrumental uh, to establish a collaboration with the many cities and also that uh, involving uh, citizens uh, like uh, Mayor uh, D said, and also that involving the private sector with their technology and kind of find funding uh, to proceed and uh, make the SDGs achievement uh, possible. And I think uh, we'll actually join hand with ADB and the many cities in that direction. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Dizzy Hasimoto. Very, uh, I mean, in fact, this Y port, we, are, we have to come back to you for more information on this Y port, very innovative initiatives. And I see there are more questions. So let's see if we can take a few questions. And this is a question to Dr. Banadia by uh, Anton Barre. Uh, what could be done more through social development initiatives to tap into the personal strengths, resilience, and wisdom of people so that community involvement as part of localizing SDGs is met with the best citizens have to contribute? Um, Dr. Thank Banadia, this is to you. Thank you. I'm sure the other speakers will be able to answer uh, that question as well. Uh, in uh, our constituencies, uh, in especially in the UCLG, we talk uh, sustainable development on only uh, uh, approaching of three pillars, uh, economic, uh, environment, uh, and social pillars. But also we include uh, the fourth pillar uh, as a fourth pillar of sustainable development, which is culture. And culture is about people. Uh, uh, culture is about uh, the way people live, the way also people uh, interact with others. And is, is there is a big dimension of culture in uh, SDGs uh, localization as well. So uh, this is how uh, we put the culture and social dimensions, uh, especially in interaction uh, among those uh, different stakeholders. Um, because uh, in SDGs, uh, like a VLR indeed is a process. Uh, so there is a way of interaction uh, with different stakeholders and, and there is a platform that local governments also provide uh, in engaging with the different uh, uh, stakeholders in this regard. So um, we see this uh, as part of a social kind of uh, uh, engagement uh, and uh, working also with different stakeholders. But uh, important uh, for uh, this uh, process uh, is that uh, we have to understand that local governments is not the only one that can achieve SDGs. This is require uh, a different uh, or joint efforts among a stakeholders. So maybe this is why uh, this uh, raising awareness and a, a key role that every stakeholders can play, that should be highlighted, uh, especially in the VLR itself. And that's also include means of implementations. Back Thank you so you, much, uh, Dr. Banadia. Okay, last question. Are there examples of innovative partnerships that your city, this is the question to Mayor Bernard again, uh, that your city has developed with other stakeholders to localize the SDGs or to promote SDG? Um, so basically asking some examples of innovative partnerships, uh, Mayor Bernard. Yeah, well, I think the, one of the great partnerships we have is this, with the Smart Cities Network and the Smart Cities Council. Uh, through those partnerships, uh, we've, we've uh, collaborated the Smart City and Sustainable Cities uh, Framework, which uh, one of which is UNESCAP as well, that uh, provides uh, with, with tools in, in measuring and assessing our, our uh, uh, projects on the SDG. So there are a lot more of um, partnerships out there. Uh, we just need to, to find uh, the, we just need the uh, linkages uh, uh, to, to collaborate with them. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor Bernard. So uh, with this, we have come uh, to the end of our uh, program. And uh, now I'd like to invite Mr. Bruno Carrasco, Director General, concurrently Chief Compliance Officer of Sustainable Development and Climate Change Department of EDB uh, to deliver closing remarks for today, actually. Um, uh, Mr. Carrasco leads EDB-wide knowledge, innovation, policies, and strategies in all thematic and, sec and sector operation areas and ensures compliance with environment and social safeguard policies. He oversees the administration of trust funds and global funding initiatives and provides advice to management on strategic and policy matters, work plans, and major operational matters. He joined ADB 23 years ago and has served in countries across all its regional departments. He holds a doctorate degree in economics from the University of Essex. Over to you, DJ Carrasco. Thank you very much, uh, Rachana. Can you hear me? Yes, Bruno, we can hear. All right, thank you very much. Distinguished colleagues from ESCAP and UNDP, distinguished mayors and panelists, dear colleagues from ADB, dear participants, on behalf of the organizing team, it's my great pleasure to deliver the concluding remarks of this first day of, of course, the two-day event on achieving the sustainable development goals in Asia and the Pacific. Today's discussion was on the crucial issue of how the localization of SDGs can support and accelerate achieving the 2030 agenda and, of course, recovering from COVID-19. We are all 
aware that subnational governments have been at the forefront of the fight against COVID-19, and they have played a key role in responding to the critical needs, as well as providing basic services uh, to their citizens, reflecting the devolved responsibilities of health, including primary health centers, education, and others. This is indeed uh, a great and largely successful example to underscore the importance of subnational government. The development pathways of countries have hence shifted from central to local with increased emphasis on delivery of services on the ground and facilitating, of course, local economic development. ADB has been a strong supporter of localizing the sustainable development goals. Based on ADB strategy 2030, our operational plan for priority six entitled Strengthening government, Governance excuse me, and Institutional Capacity for the period 2019 to 2024, prioritizes, among others, support to decentralization and local governance reforms, which have a strong linkage with the improvement of service delivery outcomes, and hence crucial for achieving national and subnational SDG priorities. I'd like to share some examples of how ADB has been supporting its developing member countries in the localizing sustainable development goals agenda. For example, since 2018, our regional technical assistance entitled Strengthening Institutions for Localizing Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development has been working with a range of regional and global networks on localizing SDGs and has been sponsoring small scale pilot initiatives in selected countries. For example, we are currently support or we were supporting the government in such things as development of quality healthcare standards and investment and trade index uh, at the subnational level in Lao PDR. We have also been involved in clarifying the roles and responsibilities for integrated watershed environment management among different government tiers in the People's Republic of China. And we've also been involved in gender responsive planning of residential areas, parks, and green spaces in Georgia. The TA was instrumental in designing and delivering an excellent e-learning course on decentralization, local governance, and localizing SDGs and in Asia and the Pacific, which targets mainly ADB staff as well as government officials, and which I would encourage participants to join on the next round of training if you have not been part of this. ADB's governance thematic group is supporting the city government of Jakarta in Indonesia in the preparation of its very first voluntary local review, which is expected uh, to be launched in early 2022. We're also working with the governments of Georgia and Cambodia on the preparation of the localizing SDG snapshots, a diagnostic tool to better understand the challenges and opportunities for SDG localization in these countries. And when successful, looking at how we can replicate that across other local governments. Our country operations are aligned with the SDG strategies, and this is very important. Uh, and it, of course, prior, it prioritizes uh, uh, our developing member countries, uh, including in such efforts as enhancing the localization of SDGs, as many of our operations aim to enhance public service delivery. You'll find examples in our corporate report on the sustainable development goals. Let me share some of these. In India, for example, the West Bengal Drinking Water Sector Improvement Project approved in 2018 aims to provide safe drinking water services to about 1.65 million people using a high technology based smart water management system to efficiently manage services. In Tamil Nadu, uh, the uh, urban, uh, Tamil Nadu Urban Flagship Investment Program, also approved in 2018, aims to develop a climate resilient sewage collection treatment and drainage system across 10 cities and install the country's first solar powered sewage treatment plant on a pilot basis. In Cambodia, ADB is supporting the decentralization efforts through the Decentralized Public Service and Financial Management Sector Development Program, now in its second phase and approved in 2020, which includes support for the establishment of a national school of local administration and funding for a newly created subnational investment fund. Finally, in Pakistan, the uh, Punjab Intermediate Cities Improvement Investment Project approved in 2017, supports the rehabilitation of parks, improvement of city public transport routes, as well as water supply and sanitation services and upgradation of footpaths. 
We recognize the importance of the bottom-up contributions to the SDGs together with the top-down ongoing work towards the formulation and implementation of national SDG strategies. I'm very pleased to see that the assessment of the voluntary national reviews are complemented by the voluntary subnational reviews and voluntary local reviews, which are important tools not only to document the efforts of subnational governments, as we've heard today, in contributing to the achievement of the SDGs, but also very helpful in identifying the challenges uh, subnational governments face in making their meaningful contributions to the SDGs. Now, looking back, the fiscal implications of the pandemic have been quite significant. Uh, there is indeed a risk that the fiscal space of subnational governments will shrink further as, the, as they largely depend on fiscal transfers from the central government. Uh, domestic resource mobilization, or DRM, is therefore key in securing financing for the recovery interventions. Uh, on that note, uh, I'd like to uh, highlight that in May of this year, ADB launched the Asia Pacific Tax Hub as a platform to strengthen domestic resource mobilization and international tax cooperation. The hub will support our member countries on three main building blocks. One is the preparation of the medium term revenue strategy. Um, it to, that uh, covers um, such things as the roadmaps of automation of tax administrations and proactive, of course, participation as well uh, in the area of international tax initiatives. Strengthening and improving domestic resource mobilization is crucial for making greater progress in the achievement of the SDGs by 2030, and we know, unfortunately, that they are all off track. Of particular interest is the untapped potential of local governments to mm, be able to generate greater own revenue uh, through such things as levying property taxes. And again, the tax hub uh, will uh, provide uh, quite a bit of uh, knowledge transfer and expertise in this area. With these comments, I would like to uh, once again thank all the speakers and panelists uh, who gave their valuable time and shared with us insightful uh, learning and experience today. My thanks also goes to the leadership uh, of VP Susan Tono and the organizing team, including Hiranya Rachana, Tony, Ali, and the event management team. We do hope that uh, there will be uh, many more uh, opportunities for such events in the future to share knowledge and continue building on this great partnership to jointly take forward this important agenda of localizing SDGs. As I close the first day of the two-day event, please allow me to remind you to join tomorrow, the second and final day of the event, which will be focused on impact and alignment uh, for the SDGs. Thank you so much. Thank you, DG Carrasco, uh, for this uh, closing remarks. And uh, with this, we close our first day of the two-day event. So thank you so much, all the panelists. It's been really nice hearing uh, from the field, actually, from different cities across the world, actually. Thank you so much. <laughs>